Vice has decided to do something absolutely horrifying. Put eight women in a room and allow them to argue. But these aren't just regular women. Some are pro-feminists, others are anti-feminist. And let me tell you this, from what I've heard, it didn't go as planned. People got pretty mad. They argued and they argued. They talked everything from equality to the wage gap, to things I can't talk about this early in a YouTube video or YouTube will get mad, to men. Trans people, me too, they talked about everything and they went toe to toe, ladies and gentlemen. There was almost fights, it was unbelievable. And I'm just judging that off Sydney Watson, a friend of mine who was actually on this Vice debate panel and took part in the arguing. You can check out her video. But I thought I'd watch the entire argument for myself for the very first time and bring you guys along for the ride. So let's allow right now Finally, what should have been done from the start? Let's let a man step in and sort these arguments out. And who better than me, a comedian, Isaac Butterfield? How you doing? So we can we who can pick what no we want to Who doesn't have barriers? Women doesn't don't have barriers. I'm, women, yeah. What, what's we have no. You, you can do whatever you want. Uh, I can you? or you can. What's stopping you? Spoiler alert: that lady has no legs. But the. The whole argument, and that's the that's the whole start of the Vice piece right there that goes for 43 minutes. Um, there is nothing stopping you if you are born female from doing everything that men can do, okay? Even now, you can even have a penis, which is exciting. But I just think that it really does come down to this. Some people like to be the victim. Some people like to whinge. Some people like to bitch and moan, and I think that's what we're gonna see in this video. But no spoilers, there won't be any spoilers, let's continue to watch. Oh, Vice News. Really let themselves go. Right, we're gonna look at everything. Identity, politics. This city wants to play some Vice debate. Now, there have been these debates before and they are good fun to watch, go back and watch them. Uh, but the whole anti uh, and pro-feminist debates, they haven't really been happening that much recently. Uh, but I think it's important that Vice brought this back and I think it's even more important that they turned the comments off in this video. So obviously they were getting absolutely hammered in the comment section. But anyway, I digress. We know we can't represent everybody's views, but we did try our best to bring together a diverse group of women today. In today's polarized world, is feminism dead? You I saw your hand. I think that depends on the definition of feminism. <laughs> I strongly think that feminism is more of an action than an identity. Eli Elric. I know that name. Why do I know that name? Eli Elric, I'm pretty sure Blair White made a video on her a while ago. And then Eli tried to sue or is suing Blair White, so I shan't be talking too much shit about Eli. Uh, I've got a baby coming, I've got enough things to worry about. Yeah, so Eli's suing Blair White. I'm not 100% sure why. Uh, this is from Twitter though. This is according to Women Read Women. Uh, Eli Elric is accused of rape and sexual assault. There are receipts of admissions, allegedly of one of Elric's, this is not my opinion, this is what's said by them, so please don't come after me. Uh, one of Elric's, uh, because you know, I, you do scare me with your white hair, you look like that monk from uh, the Da Vinci Code. Uh, allegedly one of Elric's victims committed suicide. Alleged, it's all alleged, none of this is proven. Uh, but that tweet is shared from women reading women. So I don't know what's happening there. It's got 50,000 followers. Maybe it's legit, maybe it's not. It could be all ridiculous, but that is who this Eli uh, lady is. I would say it's uplifting all women, in which case it's very alive. At the same time, um, if we do follow that definition, feminism has splintered off into so many different areas that you can look at um, people like Sheryl Sandberg who say you should just get another nanny if you feel oppressed. I don't know who that is, but Fair advice. And if we're talking <laughs> about that kind of feminism... Um... I love that laugh. Because, you, you, you know, I saw that when I was starting out uh, doing open mic comedy when I first started my career. You would have these people who would sit up the back, other comics, that would sit up the back of the room and they wouldn't laugh at, say, me, because I was doing offensive material to some people. And they wouldn't laugh at that, but they get one of their mates up there and they would laugh at every single thing they said, even though it was sort of anti-comedy, it was just awkward, weird shit. That's the sort of laughs that you get with feminists. And I, I guarantee you we're gonna see this in this video more. People just go, ah, yes, queen, you fucking nailed it. 
Fucking does me head in. Go on, Eli, sorry to interrupt. Yeah, it's pretty dead. Yeah, I mean, as long as the human race exists, feminism, feminism will never be dead. There's something that we're gonna have to strive and work, work towards um, to make sure that there's equality. I don't think feminism is dead. I think it's important that it exists. We don't want a world where equality doesn't have people fighting for it. Because there are opportunities for people, let's say, who don't like women to try and take things back and it shouldn't be like that. Women who were born 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago should have exactly the same rights as anyone born a man, all right? That is absolutely, we'll this is the fucking thing that does me. I hear all the time that Isaac Butterfield, right, hates women, and I hate women. What are you talking about? Just because I disagree with some things that feminists say doesn't mean I hate women. That is insane, all right? I agree that feminism, equality of the sexes, is fucking important. But when you try and destroy men, when you try and destroy straight white men, and that's your whole life, when everyone's oppressed and everyone's the victim, that is what I will argue against, all right? Everybody love everybody, everybody let live, but that goes both ways. So feminism is not dead. I don't know that it can die. As long as there's power and oppression, there will be people fighting for equity. And um, until that somehow goes away, feminism is alive and well. She's, she's right. Power and oppression until that goes away, which it won't, right? Everyone's gonna, someone's gonna be oppressed somewhere, right? You can't have everyone being super, you can't have everyone exactly equal. But what she's referring to isn't people mining for rare earth minerals in the middle of fucking Africa. Those people are oppressed by power. She's talking about people who are on this panel who just wake up every day in their million dollar house and you claim that they're oppressed. What the fuck are you talking about? I think feminism um, isn't actually about equality, it's about equality when it benefits us. I think feminism is really about women wanting special privileges and treatment. That's Pearl, I like Pearl, uh, she has some good things to say. I'd like Pearl to come on the podcast too. Uh, Pearl, hello. At the expense of men often, See, and this face is like, mm, yeah, you're wrong. You don't agree with me, so you're a fucking bitch. Similar to what Pearl just said, I find that a lot of feminist ideology and thought today feels more of like a supremacist movement rather than something that is supposed to be advancing the goals of equality. I don't think that we can really term what's going on as feminism because it looks so different to, I think, the earlier feminist movement. And I feel like Sydney's spot on there. It's not so much advancing women up to parity with men, it's all about taking them the next step and making men the oppressed. That's like the whole goal there is like, yes, we are boss babes, we are, uh, yeah, the girls, all this type of shit, and take them past men and make men the little slaves. Which, you know, whatever, I know some dudes are into that. Uh, but here's the thing, that's not equality. Okay, you can't reach equality by pushing someone else down. And that's not what this is about. This is about making people equal. Simple, that's all. Or at least that's what it used to be about. It's not about that anymore. I think life is easier if you're a girl, um, actually. Yeah, I, think, I think there's a lot of benefits um, that men don't have. I'm, I'm not gonna speak anything to race. I'm just talking about gender specifically. It's usually like an excuse. Okay, Pearl is right and she's wrong, I think. Women have it easy in a lot of ways, but men have it easy in a lot of other ways. I think there are tons of different things that you can say, hey, it's easier being a man here, it's easier being a woman here, whatever. Like you can't narrow it down just on gender. It's just not the appropriate way to calculate what's easy, right? It's just not, because it's all about individuality and it's all about where you grew up and how much money your parents have. There's so many things that factor into it. And that's that's why I have issues and I raise issues with things like the wage gap and all that type of shit. It depends on the individual. It doesn't come down to gender. It may, some women may find it harder to do this and some men might find it harder to do that. It doesn't come down to gender. It is individual. And I think the quicker that we stop playing these religious games, like where, oh, I'm team woman and I'm team man. Fuck that. Just be a human, all right? And treat everyone around you how you want to be treated, and then you will reach equity and parity and all that shit. Fuck me. It's like, honestly, I think as a girl, you have equal opportunity in the world. I think there's benefits, like for example, we have quotas for women in specific jobs that are given to us that aren't given to men. So yeah, I would, I would say it's easier. Spot on, Pearl. There are lots of jobs that are advertised just for women. 
And that is weird. I remember when I was looking for work, uh, probably about five years ago, I left one of my jobs and I wanted to find some part-time work while I was still working at uh, YouTube and all that type of stuff. So what I did is I went on to one of the job websites. But so many of the jobs either only you could uh, apply if you're a woman or if you're indigenous in, in Australia, right? That I'm talking about. So I felt a bit weird about that. I was like, hang on, why, why does my gender and my ethnicity have to do with whether or not I can apply for a certain job? It doesn't seem very fair. Being a girl. That's Just from a <sighs> viewpoint over here, though, it seems there's a lot of privilege, pretty privilege in what you're saying and mm. that you're white and you present. Do you think I'm pretty? Thank you. I think <laughs> that you present. This whole pretty, this is the thing, they, this is inter intersectional feminism. They move the goalposts constantly. Like at, at the start, it was like men versus women. And now it's men and white women versus feminists of color and disabled feminists and trans people. And then those white disabled ones will move to the other side and then it'll be everyone. Stop moving the fucking goalposts, all right? Either decide if you're talking about all women or just you. Are you just talking about you? Is that what you're doing? Because at the moment you're saying, no, no, anyone who's privileged, which could be pretty women, is now on the man's side. That's what a weird way to argue. Then in a way that beauty standards have accepted. And so they call me ugly on the internet all the time. They, they be roasting me daily, I swear to God. I don't mean to say I think you're gorge. I just mean that there are a certain value that we give to certain bodies. I mean, let's that. also dig into mm -hmm. why these quotas exist and why these, um, what you're calling because privileges Because we want exist. special treatment. Um, no, but it's because there have mm -hmm. historically and presently in most jobs been fewer women. Mm -hmm. Women, dickhead. And because of sexism. Yeah, sure, in some jobs, but in other jobs, it's not the case at all. You see, here's the problem with taking generalizations, Eli. If you do that, then you go out there and you say something like all women are oppressed when they try to find a job. Well, that's not true at all. What if you want to be a nurse? What if you want to care for children or a teacher or whatever? right? Then there's no pressure to not be a woman at all. But if you want to be an engineer, there's also no pressure not to be a woman. But it just so happens that women don't seem to want to take those jobs. And that's fine. Maybe they're not interested in doing that university degree. And that's fine. But if you look at that like oppression, you're just lying to yourself. How oh, is it sexism when we have no barriers today? So we can, we can pick what no we want to pick. It doesn't have barriers. Women doesn't, don't have barriers? I'm, women, yeah. What, what's we stopping have no you? Barriers. You can do whatever you want. Uh, I can you? or you can. We're not talking about you. We know you're in a wheelchair, love. Stop playing that What's car. stopping you? <laughs> as a woman, as a... <laughs> Speed humps. Speed humps is stopping her. Woman. As a woman. As a woman. See, as a woman. That ignores a lot that I'm a woman with a disability. So well, what about men that are in wheelchairs? Come on, love. There's a lot stopping me that you don't have to think about. Well, as I said before, I'm about. speaking about women. I'm not. You're speaking I'm not, as. A, you're speaking for yourself. You're speaking as, a, as an able-bodied able -bodied woman. Woman. An able-bodied white woman with red hair, and she's wearing a purple sweater. And yeah, we can come up with a million different ways to differentiate her with everyone else on the panel, or we could just say we're arguing about the actual gender and if you look at this where I've, <laughs> where I've paused you just see Sydney just going oh fuck this is just ridiculous we're arguing about ridiculous things things that don't matter and this is why nothing gets done is because you're arguing about things that just don't matter I that is why presents why of course of course there's going to be other barriers if you're disabled I'm sure well, like I'm, I'm not I'm not I'm not I'm talking about as a woman so you're just going to ignore White the women have it easier gap. yes I would agree. What? Is, you're, you're just going to ignore the pay gap, um, regulation over bodies. The pay gap has been oh, just proven and, and debunked The pay gap doesn't endlessly. exist. The regulation over our bodies. Hey, what is Eli Eldrick? Who is Eli Eldrick? I thought she was trans. Is she trans? i got no idea. But if she is trans, there's no regulation over your body. What are you fucking talking about? It doesn't, God, it's, so the, it's the industries that women pick. Uh, there, let's talk there's, about there's it. a pay gap, but it's because women don't want to do the hardest industries. So, I, I don't yes, absolutely. If you look at just every single woman compared to every single man in, let's say, Australia, right? It is, it is extremely common to see men pick jobs that are away from home, very, very difficult, dangerous and thus attract higher pay and for women to find jobs that are closer to their home uh, can allow for having children all that type of stuff and they choose to have children which means they're away from the workforce they don't progress as much and that's a life choice 
That is why the pay gap exists. Did you know that 75% of new lawyers in Victoria are women? Of the new lawyers that came into work this year, 75% of the new lawyers that came into work for 2021 and 2022 were women. And that's great. They wanted to do that. Wonderful. But why aren't we upset that men aren't choosing that anymore? It's because we're not fucking whingers. Go on. I don't think it's that simple. I think like I think that's just an oversimplification. I think the fact of the matter is that women structure their lives differently to men. Men don't give birth. Men don't have. Oh, Sydney, you bigot. Yes, they do. Have to carry pregnancies. Men don't. Bigot again. Yes, they do. Don't have to be the primary caregiver most of the time. Women also don't hold jobs for as long as men do. They often will stop and start. They'll go back into work. They'll take time off. They'll take part time jobs. The way that men work and women work are astronomically different. And this is just known. This is, this is so obvious to people who take the time to look at the problems. The pay gap is structured, yes, of sexism in a small minority of the time, right? But the vast majority is because of decisions made by people. Idiots. And to try to say that they're comparable is, is where this issue comes from. They're not comparable. Two things. First of all, um, let's dig into why they think that um, they should take these jobs, which is society, societal sexism. And then also... Is it? Is it, Eli? Or is it that women choose to want to work with people and men want to choose to work with things and men choose to work with things and it just so happens that working with things, creating things, those type of things, those type of jobs attract more money. That's just the fact of the situation, sorry. Um, actually, all I mean, Department of Labor, all statistics, at least speaking in the US, um, have found that when compared for the same jobs, there still is a pay gap, particularly when it pertains to race. Because 60% of women have never asked for a raise, so how There's another one. If you want more money, you gotta ask. So how can you complain about your pay if why, you don't why ask? Are they, why are they not asking? Wait, what happens when women ask for a raise? God, they sound like chickens going off when it's feeding time. So, Sorry, I just, sure. I've, been, yes. I've been wanting to say something, but I want to be respectful. Of this is the same thing. You want to say it, but you're not saying it. It's, it's, what, we're, it's what we're talking about. I don't, like, don't want to interrupt Do people it. and I want to let them finish their <laughs> thoughts. Jump in. Just but, you know. Sydney just punched her own hand. That's a microaggression, mate. Right about of what a lot of us here know that we need. It's like there are the barriers, right, that we constantly ignore that are very much systemic. What are these barriers? If you grow up your entire, and this is what I worry about the next generation of, of women going into the workforce. They've been taught since they were young, since like, you know, 2015 when this really kicked off, particularly online, they have been taught that they have barriers and they can't get past these barriers and there will always be barriers. So they're going to go into the workforce, they're going to go into adult life, they're going to have children and teach them that there are barriers you can't get past. If you are a female watching this, there aren't barriers. If you want to do something, do it. And microaggressive, right? We see them and experience them every like day. Like what? In the US, so, like what? What would you like to know an example of? Some I, I know you said, you said that there's like barriers. I want to know what barriers in the US today as a woman. Well, as a woman or as a woman of color? See, you're playing fucking word games again. Let's be specific. As a woman, I and said we as don't, a woman. Well, no, I can't answer as a woman. Oh, God. I just, just feel like your woman, question is right? kind of hostile when you're Oh, you would. Fuck it. Like, no. I don't, I, there are no barriers to what I want. Congratulations. That means you have a privilege where you're not facing any friction and I that's mean, showing. And I feel like. We all face certain barriers in life. Okay, we all do. We all have things that are wrong with us uh, or right with us or whatever you, however you want to look at it. And we possibly can't achieve things that other people can. Some people are born to be sports people. Some people are born to be fucking mathematicians. Others are born to be hilarious comedians with magnificent beards, but unfortunately they're balding. There are differences amongst all of us. We just have to either get over those or work harder on those differences to make them the, the gap smaller. It comes down to who you are as a person and whether or not you want to be a victim or you want to just get on with it. I think, like as an Ameri I think as an American, you're very privileged. Oh, like, I mean, I'm not ignoring that. Yeah, right. We're at like a so. basic level of what, I mean, the feminist movement is when it comes to just being born a woman, right? Physically, pound for pound, we are born as women and we have less lean muscle mass than men. So there are issues of violence and assault and stuff like that. And so therefore, there are policies, there are things to help women physically, like, for example, I believe, being able to carry a firearm and being able to use that safely. That's really interesting. She believes that because women are naturally smaller than most men, that 
and weaker, if you want to use that term, or not as strong, they should be able to carry a firearm, or at least she wants to be able to carry a firearm. I don't know if a firearm is the best move. I mean, you know, I, I don't know if having a firearm right on you if you get angry is a great move. It's a bit worrying. Maybe pepper spray. In Australia, and I think in the UK as well, you cannot carry pepper spray. It's considered a firearm. And when, when, we were, when uh, my wife and I were in Florida, we were at a gun show because when in, you know, when in Rome. And we asked some people who had pepper spray there, we were just asking about it, I was really interested in it. And they said basically, oh, so these, uh, these two African-American women were asking Claire. They were saying, so how do you protect yourself when you're by yourself? And Claire said, oh, we just sort of just, well, nothing. And they couldn't believe it. They couldn't believe that you can't carry pepper spray. I think in Australia, you should be able to carry pepper spray. It is ridiculous that you can't. You want to stop creeps? You can't stop creeps attacking women, right, by just saying, hey, men, stop that. Because the men who will listen, or the men that agree with that, aren't going to attack women. Give women something to fight back with. My question. So I'm thinking male versus female. But my so feminism my, but, includes but so, ability, but so, but so, it includes race. my question is You guys can, can talk. Women can versus talk. men. Like what, what barriers do we need removed? Because that, that's my statement. I'm not, I'm not stating anything else. I'm stating women. They can't answer it. That's the women thing. versus but. men. It's very silly. Like, so, so what barrier? I just, silly? Just, just, just give you a barrier. Give a barrier. It's a question. It's a fair question. It's not a fair question. It's How is it not a fair? It's hostile. You fucking... So, I think it's the mindset, women taking like the agency, women taking initiative. I think it's mindset holding them back a lot because if you want to be in a competitive world and compete, you have to have the right mindset. Agreed. You got to go to war. If you want to be successful, you have to give everything to it. If you want to rise to the ranks of CEO, if you have kids, it's going to hold you back. If you decide you won't move away or work long hours, it's going to hold you back. If you don't have an engineering degree and you want to be an engineer and get paid 500k a year in some mine, not having the degree is going to hold you back. All right, And being the victim and constantly complaining is absolutely undoubtedly going to hold you back of confidence or what society tells them um, for the reason that they're not achieving what they need to achieve when that's not the case. You have to have the mindset of achieving because the men who built the world had the mindset of building it. So the women who want to engage and build that further, they need to have that same mindset. I don't think we do. I don't. I think it's like assuming that we all want to be capitalist babies. Right. I think that men are not well adjusted in the society, <laughs> and no, women are not that. trying to re. How many wars has this woman been in? Have a go at the medals on her. My God, you look like a, <laughs> a North African dictator. <laughs> Body, what they have built for us. Mm. I think that like what we're forgetting is a very important detail, which is just like human respect and dignity. Yeah, that's and true. not asking people to prove what their experience is and to prove to you like it is. My God, this is ridiculous. This is such a weak attitude. And this is why you won't be successful. You, living your life as a victim is not a good thing. This is the lie that these people will teach you. They'll say, oh, you're a victim. You are a victim. You are oppressed. And that's how you should live your life. Fuck that. Move past that. Like such conservative thinking to say, like, I don't understand. Explain it to me. How is that conservative thinking? That is logical thinking. I hate this shit. Versus just saying, I don't understand. And let me respect. I hate this shit because it hurts women. That's what I hate about it. And if I had a daughter, I have a wife. I care about her, obviously. And I'm so glad that she doesn't have this mindset because it is drilled into young women. This is not a good mindset to have, for anyone to have. To constantly be a victim and claim that you are oppressed when you're born in the first world is ridiculous. What you are no, saying. No, I'm respecting right? wherever you're starting point. I'm respecting that. I'm really respecting that. I'm saying that if you don't have the mindset you can even achieve it, you're never going to even try. So it's but never... Yes. A thousand percent yes. Achieve what? Like, what are we talking achieve about? Achieve anything. And you can... Mm -hmm. I feel like you projected world. this like no, capitalist she... ideology she... on every woman. You read the Communist Manifesto once. Shut the fuck up. Achieve whatever it is you're looking for, equality, equity. But what I'm saying is women in the feminist space and a lot of these other spaces, we don't acknowledge that we have to take the initiative. We have to take the action and we have to have the mindset. We have to demand those things. I don't understand how we're getting so off topic. This is about feminism, feminism today. Whereas everybody wants to make this about their individual, oh, I. 
Thank you, Sydney. Here are all the, the multitude of other things that factor into my person. Great. This is about feminism. It's about womanhood. I understand that all of you have your own individual experiences and, and the other things. Just to mansplain for a second, this is Sydney saying, shut the fuck up, you whinging fucks. Things that feed into you as a person, that's perfectly fine. But this is where intersectionality falls off the planet and loses, I would argue, probably the vast majority of people, including me. I'm not of course, because everyone's pro-feminism. Everyone's pro-feminism. But when you get into intersectionality, when it comes down to what's your personal disability, have you got psoriasis, Where, can, how long can you go for a walk for, all this shit, then people just go, oh, mate, just fucking get over yourself. Just have a go at life, will ya? Yeah, everyone's got it tough. Some men have it really, really tough. Some women have it really, really tough. Just, we can't worry about the 1%. He, 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 he. Oh, people in a wheelchair. And then people in a wheelchair with a leg infection. And then people with two wheelchair. Just go with gender. That's what we're talking about here. I'm not even a feminist. I don't give a crap about feminists arguing amongst themselves about who's the most victimized. But this is annoying to listen to. I, I honestly just, I don't understand anything anybody's even trying to get at. Look, I just want to say that I don't think equity... And Sydney said that in her video, and I suggest you go and watch it, that that what she said there had a lot more context to it and she continued to talk. So go and check that out. How many of you would identify as pro-choice? Let's do a show of hands for pro-choice. We're talking about abortion here. And that's what I didn't mention in the start of this video because YouTube would be mad. Uh, pro-choice, my opinion is, uh, what I, well, my opinion upsets a lot of people, but I think in the early stages of pregnancy, get it out. If you want it, if you want it out. I understand, and this is the hard thing with abortion, is that will turn into a child. That will. It's not the same as, oh, it's nothing. It's, it will turn into a child. But why should you have to have a baby if you're 16 years old or you're 20 years old and you've gone on a one-night stand or whatever? Why should you then have to raise a child? That is madness, all right? That is madness. I feel like pro-choice is pro-life, though. But... Yeah, yeah. Okay, and folks who identify as pro-life, why do you identify as... And this is also another issue with conservative people and liberal people or left versus right. If you are conservative, you are a right-wing person, or you believe in that sort of ideology, you have to say you are pro-life, right? And if you're a left-wing person, you have to say you're pro-choice. There's no in the middle. There's no in the middle. And particularly with topics like abortion, there is no in the middle, but there should be. There should be nuance in every discussion. You should not be able to abort a child at fucking nine months. No. But at six weeks, maybe, case by case. As each. You've gone from legal, safe, rare, to, yeah, I'm so proud, let me beatbox in front of the Planned Parenthood. Yeah, I got murder on my mind. I, the yeah, fair point, fair point. That whole thing that it's celebrated is weird. The fact that, that it's celebrated that, that murdering uh, children, especially uh, in late-term pregnancies, is celebrated that... Sydney says especially, and I think, I'm not going to try to talk shit about Sydney, I do like her, she's a friend of mine, but I think maybe she has to play along with that mindset of all abortion is criminal. Maybe she thinks that early term is not too bad. The Birth policies control. that are pushed 41. to continue <laughs> perpetuating patriarchy. <laughs> Oh God, this woman, this is, I don't know who she is, but she is the most painful human alive. And anti-women, um, like... Why have you got so many war medals, babe? You're fucking 23 years old. Oh, you look older than that. You're 29 years old, probably 32 years old. You look like it's a tough wind wherever you live. Taking the autonomy away from women, it is heartbreaking to see women pushing that. That is a fuckload of medals on it. Propaganda. No, I, it's all brainwash. Like you. Oh, it it's is, brainwash because you don't think, agree with no, me. No, I. So therefore, I've been I'm brainwashed. brainwashed. I have lived deeply institutionalized. Man, I, I have lived. Oh, shut up. No one cares. Consequences. Even though you have 41 forms of birth control. Who does that benefit? I don't think that benefits women. I think actually that benefits men because it means that men can have sex with you without consequence. It means that you can sleep with whoever you feel like, great, but there are consequences because women are the ones who get pregnant and carry babies and give birth. It's very these are binary these are, these are, version of yes, sex. Yes, because, because sex is because binary. Sex is, of course it's binary, you idiot. Only men can have sex with women to procreate. Well, women can have sex with men to procreate, but only those two. The 78 other genders, all right, 
you can have your little gender party over here, but when it comes down to who's having sex with who and whose mother and father, it's either male or female. Sorry, mate. I want to talk about transgender issues. Should go. trans women be included in feminist conversations? How about in women's spaces? I think so. I think sometimes. I think it depends. Um, why not? You know, if someone looks like a woman, dresses like a woman, lives their life as a woman, then yeah, probably. Uh, but I think it's nuanced, right? I shouldn't be able to become trans tomorrow and then be seen as a feminist god. That's, that's what I mean. Yes, they're women. What's the question? I'm a guy. They're women. Ah. Oh. Pearl, Trans women name. are women. Uh okay. Cool, babe. Don't you get tattooed in your fucking face. Um. So I, I want to come at this from the um, position of an athlete. Oh, Jesus. Um, so, so I play semi-pro basketball, semi-pro volleyball. Yeah, and if you do come at it from an athlete point of view, I, I think what Pearl's going to say is uh, surrounding the benefits that being a man for a lot of your life or being born a man uh, has over uh, people who are born female. And if you transition into a female later in life or early in life, you will have those benefits still. And that is a, a, a female space and that is female sports. And yes, they definitely shouldn't be allowed to compete against uh, biological women if it is a professional sport particularly combat sports or contact sports. If it's chess, I don't give a fuck, right? Whatever, do your chess, you fucking nerds. But if it's fucking MMA, if it's boxing, if it's football, if it's rugby league, rugby union, whatever, then yes, it is not okay. It's not okay to have someone who was born a man in there beating up or running over or whatever people who were born female. And I always say this, I always use this point, I played rugby league for a very long time, 17 years, as a junior and as a senior, and I guarantee you right now I could run over any single player from the fucking female uh, Australian rugby league team. Just saying. Sorry. So when it comes to like athletic spaces, I don't think that trans women should be allowed into athletic spaces because I don't think it's a fair, um, I think we, as female athletes, we work so incredibly hard for the little opportunity there is in women's sports. Would this be a like, barrier for like you? This? That's not a barrier, it's not a barrier if it's, okay, yes, it's a barrier, but it's a barrier that's there because you are not generating the same amount of revenue, right? You're not, you're not getting paid as much because you're not generating the same amount of revenue as the men in that particular sport. That's not a bad, it's a, it is a barrier, but it's a barrier that anyone has to face, right? It's a barrier that I would have to face if I wanted to go and play professional whatever, cricket, right? Or baseball. I wouldn't get paid until I was professional. That is a barrier. We all face barriers, but the barrier is not there because you're a woman. It's there because you aren't as good as the other people who are making the money. Sorry about it. So there's no barrier. There's less opportunity in some industries. That's, That's what a barrier is. There's less. <laughs> it's not. No, no, no. Then barriers are everywhere. Barriers are when you're on the road and you can't speed. That's a barrier. Oh, no, it's That's based on the market. Means. Okay. Hold on, on, hold on, guys. Based, okay. So again, we work very hard for the little opportunity there is in the space because we're not as entertaining as the men. Sorry, we're just not. And so it's like you're going to take the little opportunity that we're given. And the problem is like... It, we can't compete. You can't compete. Pearl's spot on. We are given and we all work so hard for it, And you're just giving it back to biological guys. It's like, this will be the end of- What are you fucking shaking your head at, metal lady? What? What part of that do you disagree with? sports. Have Eli? you tried confidence? Uh, Eli, hold on, Minnie. <laughs> Sorry, Eli? confidence can't make me bench what a guy benches. Pearl is so fucking spot on with this. Shit. Confidence can't make you me guys six, are seven. so hostile. She's sharing her and experience. And confidence can't make me six, seven. Seven. No, she's field. sharing. And I'd have to go. No, she's yeah. trans misogyny. Not. She's she's, she's a woman who's had it, no, an experience. It's, 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 you guys are so Pearl obsessed finish. with your own experiences right. and your own existence, and yet when a woman is sitting here telling you, "I feel as though this is unfair and this is compromising and this situation is not helping women," you guys are like, meh, meh, meh. but when you're like, "I'm a black person that did this, 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 and this," then it's valid and, and fair and vibe. Sydney's making fair points yet again. She's destroying all of you. Able Eli, I want to give you the chance to respond. Um, so this is basically a joke of a talking point. Everyone has biological advantages in sports. How, how tall are you? Uh, five eleven and a half. I'm yeah, tall. I'm, I'm five foot eight. Mm -hmm. I am a trans woman. I you would crush me. You would absolutely. Yeah. Crush yeah. But we're not talking about you, right? We're talking about. A whole group of people, if you allow every single man that goes into becoming a transgender woman into female sports, then the ones who will be successful are the ones who are going to be stronger and faster. Not fucking you, Eli, you t 
tiny, tiny person. Bone density, wrist strength, yeah. muscle density, you can't switch those. Yeah, exactly, you would crush me. But also, Eli, you would never play at the level that Pearl plays. Sydney Watson, ladies and gentlemen. Because um, you would never get there. Sydney Watson, ladies and gentlemen. So let me give you a few more examples here. Ah, because you were wrong with your first one. So Michael Phelps produced more lactic acid in his body, which caused him to swim better than any of his competitors. This was widely celebrated. And nobody contested it. Now, to, this is in a performance-enhancing hormone. So we all have different bodies. And now I'm not saying... What the fuck are you talking about? that trans women who aren't on hormones should participate, but there are, I mean, every major medical and every major sports organization agrees that trans women who have been on hormones for between one and three years, depending on the organization. Why do they agree? They agree because they're pressured into it. Have the same competitive abilities. That's, that, did the study that you're referencing had like seven people participated. That is misinformation, not, by the way. I'm referencing several different studies. I'm a trans woman and a researcher. It's getting personal. I'm a trans woman and a researcher, so I'm right, you're wrong. Oh, I don't want thing, it to be personal. A lot personal. of us live in this space where we're told that our sure. opinions don't count because they're not the right kind of opinions, and we're constantly shouted over and talked over regardless of what we look like because there's one group in society that basically takes precedence, and it's frustrating. So, yeah, of course, <laughs> it's, it's, it's frustrating because so when we... I don't know if Sydney said something funny or she's just found out a way to maniacally take over the world. Try to talk <laughs> about it, we get wow. shouted down, we get so. told to be quiet, we, we get we get spoken down to as well. She's right. She's getting spoken down to. Everything they say in this that I agree with, right? They're just old love or well, the love old love with the medals and old love who looks like she lost a leg in a war, she um they both just laugh. They just giggle. And everything they say, like, they're that outrageous. That Everything they're saying is so crazy. Like, it's funny to them. It's, yeah, it's very strange. Well, okay, so there's hostility there for plenty of women. Let's try to make this an opportunity. <laughs> She's still laughing. My to speak you're with literally each a white woman then. from Australia. You live in a bubble and you're pissed that voices that have been silenced forever finally can be heard. Take a breath, metal lady. And yeah, Sydney's from Australia, but does she live in a bubble? Twitter. Let's. Twitter, Sydney Watson. Very important doctor, claiming to be an Australian-American, white Australian woman who lives in a bubble. Oh, she was right, okay, cool. Jordan, I wanted to hear from you. So I am not a professional athlete. It, the closest thing I have ever done to anything athletic was I used to do competitive show choir when I was younger. She does look like the, the lady in Monsters, Inc., Mike Wazowski. Just and um, I don't feel really qualified to make carte blanche statements about whether or not Ooh. Maybe she wants to stay on the fence because she's thinking the other way, the naughty way, but she wants to stay friends with all the fucking woke people. Interesting. Trans women should compete in every kind of sport. And I understand that that is kind of, that's a hard pill to swallow. And for me, my first inclination is to approach everything through a lens of inclusivity. But at the same time, I also can't speak accurately to every kind of sport. And Look at Old Love in the wheelchair. She is nodding to everything. She doesn't know where Old Love's going to go with this conversation, but she's nodding because she, uh, the lady who's speaking is transgender. So whatever she says goes. This is how these people act. It's madness. Until she speaks in the opposite direction, then she would shake her head at everything. Because that is how their religion, their doctrine, their cult works. That's how it works. The different things that go into it. So I really think in these instances, the decisions are best left up to the professional governing bodies that dictate these particular sports. Ooh, she sort of disagreed with that. Wow. I just feel like in places, as an ally, in places where there's no understanding. As an ally, as a trans woman, as a woman of color. Fuck, if you start a sentence like that, it's exactly the same as starting a sentence as, as a vegan. We can just respect and not really, like our opinions don't fucking matter. Yeah, your opinions don't fucking matter, okay? Your opinions don't fucking matter, even though it's so logical to think, oh, hang on, if you're born a man and you have a higher bone density, you have a better chance at growing enormous fucking muscles and walking around with a dick and balls and you've got testosterone pumping through your veins for 30 fucking years, even though it's obvious that that would assist you in becoming a good sportsman or sportswoman, your opinions don't matter, so we must just silence them. Yeah, cool. Eli, I saw you nodding your head over there. Several times. She's been nodding her fucking head the whole fucking thing. Um, <laughs> so, um, 
this is more than about sports. This is about. No, it's not. We're talking about sports, mate. How um, free, free and equal participation for transgender people in social life. And the right sees this as a socially acceptable way to begin to remove trans people. No, no, no. Ignoring you. <laughs> if if women's sports were actually going to end in some way, um, I mean, it's just not happening. When it's not about women's sports ending, it's about it not being fair for women. That's all this is about. You think there would be more trans? If you, if we, if we're honest, we should be saying, hey, we let's 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 stop the transgender men coming in and competing against men. But they don't do that because women aren't as strong as men. Even the ones that become men still aren't as strong because it's not transferable, right? You could be on testosterone for 30 fucking years and still some natural born men. Well, actually, no, that's not true because I've seen some chicks on testosterone, bodybuilders that would fucking probably fuck me with their big clitties. So you know what I'm saying? You don't see women becoming men and then competing without steroids against natural born men. It doesn't happen, but it does happen the other way. And that's why we're talking about it from that angle. I want Based to move on, on to a different topic. I want to talk about Me Too and sort of this social movement that we've lived through, we're living through right now. What is the state of feminism sort of in this post Me Too era? We're in post Me Too? All right. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me. Yeah, post Me Too, as in it happened, you know, five years ago. We're still dealing with it and we should deal with it because um, men do bad things sexually, uh, women do bad things sexually, but men do it a lot more often and we should call that out where it happens. Um, sorry, I got distracted so by the it. Me Too part. Uh, so I was like, we're in post Me Too? Wow, like... No one's getting like sexually harassed anymore. So I sort of skipped through the Me Too thing because they all basically agree that it is important to have people speak out. And I agree, I agree, I agree. About beauty standards. We, we talked a little bit about this. This got brought up at the beginning. How does that tie into femininity? The thing with beauty standards, this is what I think. I think a lot of them are set by women. They're the ones who post on Instagram, right? They're trying to empower women, but they post these photos like look at the Kardashians they inspire millions of women all over the globe to look a certain way that is their standard of beauty that they are setting that are made through filters so if you want to blame someone for beauty standards blame them Tonya as a black Latina woman in my community right like I grew up and I was ugly right like that's what I was considered I was not considered beautiful of feeling ugly but also being told I was right had a lot to do with what is believed in my community you might have just been ugly babe right colorism is one of them and so to say is it your color or were you just fucking ugly hey I'm gonna de redefine beauty for myself and to say I own myself Okay, do that. But doesn't mean you're not ugly. And I get to decide what's beautiful. I don't think she is ugly. I'm just saying. It doesn't mean that you're not ugly just because you go, I'm not ugly. You still could be ugly. It's like me saying, I got a big dick. It's a lie. I got to say, though, I did grow up being referred to as very beautiful for a woman with a disability. And that, to me, always fed this idea that disability doesn't mean beautiful. I am in some form of exceptionalism, which I then had to keep up with forever. That's a shame. But let me just say this. You've said, you've called yourself, and I didn't play all these, but you called yourself beautiful about three times in this video, all right? Not to be a dick, but... So it's like, I got this thought as I started to age, like, you can have no legs, but you better not fucking get fat. That's actually a tattoo I've got on my back. And so this idea that, like, there are certain people who are beautiful and certain people who aren't, and that inherently holds value is is a human fucking mindset that's built into our dna sorry you can't do anything about it the more the fitter you are and the more attractive you are the higher chance you have of passing on good genetics to your your, your, your children right that's where all that comes from and that's why men find certain women attractive and women find certain men attractive get over it i think you know find it in yourself yes and Jordan? Beauty standards are toxic bullshit hierarchical nonsense. <laughs> Shut up. And I say that as someone who has spent over a year collectively of my life in eating disorder in institutions because I have tried to put my body through hellish things to meet these beauty standards. Well, you could just eat less. You could just do that. Which more often than not are not based in reality. They're always based in reality. Eat less than you need. Just a little bit less and you'll lose weight. Right? And then hit a healthy weight 
and eat maintenance. Just don't eat more than you need. Simple. They're typically trends. They're created to push things. They're extremely useful for marketing, but they don't serve anyone's health. They don't serve anyone's self-esteem. They only act to try and tell us it have to be this way. And if you aren't this way, then there's something inherently wrong at your core, which is nonsense. You're perfect the way you are. No, you're not. That's, or, that's, that's literally the core of it. You are perfect the way you are. No one's perfect. Get over yourself. You have to keep trying. You otherwise is feeding into this industry. Doesn't matter. Keep working hard. Don't give up. Keep working hard every single day. And is just, they are not your friend or looking out for you. Layla? Oh yeah, I was gonna say, yeah, beauty in the industry is exploitative. Um, but also we have to remember, a lot of the beauty standards are based around health, what's perceived as health. A lot of the beauty right standards are based around health, what's perceived as health, like Fuck symmetry, um, certain weights, things like that. So there is shakes that side. No, no, doesn't weight doesn't have anything to do Where we it. have to balance it, and You're I think we're yourself. seeing so much more representation, which I think is incredibly important. Well, I just think that, like, if women... I think it is important to have bigger women involved in women's advertising, because big women exist. The vast majority of women are overweight, and the same goes for men. It's okay, but let's not pretend that that is the healthiest way to live your life. That's the only, that's my only argument with it. If really cared about beauty standards, like the obesity rate wouldn't be what it is. But what that's about trying you? to maintain the beauty standards. I don't, I mean, I just think like some people are more attractive, some people are less attractive, and that's just, you know. Of course. Where, where would I rate myself one to ten? Well, we're not rating, it's okay. That's what, that's what I mean. Like, I just think like some people so are more attractive. So if you are overweight, you don't care about beauty standards, well, is that the, right? Like, the point is that the beauty standard is thin, right? Well, your yeah, standard? Obesity comes from men and women, though. Yeah, you're right. That's true. But I'm saying if women really wanted to fit the beauty standard, they would be thin. And ladies and gentlemen, that was the end of it. I'd like to go through the, some of the comments, but Vice disabled them. Uh, right now, this video has 1 million views and 24,000 likes. I know people don't really use the like button anymore, but it is what it is. Ladies and gents, what an interesting video. I'd love to know what you think in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed these longer form videos, let me know, I'll do more of them. If you hated it and you wanna see me strung up by a group of feminists and had their bloody tampons thrown at me from afar, let me know that as well. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, suck me off. Be a good motherfucker. Peace the Middle East with dicks, dicks, to love. Bye-bye.